Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for being with us. Jacqueline is on assignment today. Our top story after months of debate over a controversial Confederate monument, Manatee County is moving forward in its attempt to relocate that monument to Gamble Plantation. But some are calling for the county to restore it and put it back where it used to be. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us live in Manatee County tonight to explain where and when the monument could be upright again. Jess? Scott, many Sun Coast residents probably remember just a few months ago when the Confederate monument stood here at the Manatee County Historic Courthouse. Well, since August, it's been in a storage facility in several pieces, and some community members are losing their patience. To fix what they've broken, literally. August 24th, 2017. That's the last time Manatee County residents saw the Confederate monument standing tall. Eight months later, the county staff is requesting that the state allow them to put the monument in Gamble Plantation Historic State Park. There is a, a formal process that you have to go through with the state to amend their, let's call it, their parks management plans. The state would have to approve the request. If they did, the county estimates that the statue would go up there in about six to eight months. Those that protested the statue's original location say they're okay with that. I mean, that, that sounds... Uh, way better than at a courthouse. An ideal spot for the for the monument would be uh, turned into gravel, really. But Save Southern Heritage, Florida, and its supporters are completely against the move. The Gamble Mansion, first of all, is not a graveyard for unwanted monuments. It's a state park with its own independent historical focus. David McAllister is worried that even if it did go up at Gamble Mansion, it would quickly be taken down again have been several bills at the state legislature to remove Confederate monuments from state property. If something like that would pass, the Gamble Plantation would be off limits. McAllister says the Gamble Plantation support group doesn't even want the monument there anyway. The county, however, feels that it's a perfect fit. There's a lot of Confederate history, actually, at uh, Gamble Plantation. Now, it's not a done deal that the monument will go up in the Gamble Plantation, even if the state approves it. According to the county, the public will get to put their input in and have their voices heard, and then the county commission will ultimately decide. As far as the repairs are concerned, the county says they're not worried about that until they pick a location. Reporting in Bradenton, Just Aldrich, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jess, thank you. Construction cranes, road work, hard hats, all common sights in downtown Sarasota these days. New roundabouts are going in and condos going up. But what effect do the, all these projects have on local businesses? Business owners next to the construction say it's had a substantial impact to their sales. Although they remain open, the, the street Jimmy John's Sandwiches is located on has been closed for several months while the city installs a new roundabout at Ringling and Orange. And since then, they've seen a 10% decrease in sales, and it's been a big inconvenience for their delivery drivers. It slowed everything down quite a bit. Um, we have to reroute everything and go around the, um, take a lot of detours. And um, it just adds a little bit more time. But um, when we go through the certain areas, there's a lot of congestion over in on the detours. The city of Sarasota says the roundabout is projected to be complete by mid-May. Staff says there are a total of 85 developments either in progress or just completed within the city limits. An application is submitted for a new hotel on the island of Venice. The building would be built under the Marriott brand as an upscale Sheraton Hotel. The project engineers tell the Venice Planning Commission this week that the plans have been three years in the making now. The location is on US 41, right across from the village on the Isle Continuous Care Complex. This would be the first hotel built on the island in many years. The Planning Commission approved the project, and it now goes before the Venice City Council for a rezoning hearing. All right, let's get a check on our Thursday weather now with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Hi, Bob. Hi, Scott. It's been beautiful all week long for the most part. After we got through Monday, things calmed down. Now there's another front. You can see it right there. A little bit of cloudiness associated with it. It's not going to have a big change in our weather. It will be a little increase in cloudiness tomorrow as it pulls up stationary right over the top of us. That front's going to kind of hang around through Saturday before it eventually gets pushed through as a cold front uh, later on on Sunday and Monday. Now the future cast taking you through time tonight uh, looking at uh, generally fair skies up until around 
a sunrise and then there could be some fog here. This is 830. This is a particular model depicting a rather widespread area of fog. I think it'll be less than widespread, but we will have some haze around uh, with some patchy areas of fog. We uh, we'll see that fog burn off pretty quickly by midday. Lots of sunshine and looks like a few showers along the east coast. These showers don't have much of a chance of reaching us until Saturday. There's a rain chance increasing uh, for the weekend. We'll have a different kind of weather on Sunday as well and into Monday as a result of a storm system. We'll have more on that storm coming up in a few minutes. Scott. All right, Bob, thank you. New tonight, a Manatee County man convicted of murdering a 64-year-old woman is sentenced to life in prison. In February, 84-year-old Eugene Matthews was found guilty of second-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. Prosecutors say Rebecca Rawson went to Matthews' home in Parrish to get back a dog that belonged to her family. Matthews opened fire on Rawson as she tried to drive away with the dog. Today, he was sentenced to life in prison. Parents of children playing sports at Venice's Wellfield Park are raising concerns about the police gun range. The police department's uh, pistol range is at Wellfield, right next to sports fields. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley has more. Well, the concern stems from gunfire, which can often be heard when the police department's out here doing training. And here's why. That building there, that is the Venice Police Department gun range. We are standing on one of the baseball diamonds, and just at the very end of the gun range, is one of the youth soccer fields. As a parent, I do know that freak accidents happen, so yeah, it's a concern. Kelly Thermalin is a parent of two girls, both of whom play soccer at Wellfield Park. If there's an option that isn't near kids playing fields or if there's somewhere else they can go, obviously that would be my choice as a parent. The police chief spoke to the Venice Parks Board about safety at the range, assuring them all measures are taken to ensure safety. We wanted to interview the chief, but he wasn't available. We would like to, to see the gun range move, but we also are very aware that the police need to have a gun range, and right now that's the best we've got. There is a natural berm that separates the range from the adjoining soccer field. While a new police station is in the process of being built, Venice's mayor says right now there are no plans to put a shooting range there. There are no plans to move the facility to the new public safety complex. Uh, it's not in the budget. It's not in the plans, it's not in the drawing. Still, Mayor Hollick says the police department is extremely careful when they're there training. They're very, very concerned about where they're shooting, when they're shooting. Uh, they work with the, the sports teams. Not everyone is as concerned. Gene Raymond plays on the croquet fields nearby. We hear some noise, but I don't think it's, you know, it's no worse than all the honking of horns here on, on Pine Brook Road. And again, while we did not get to do an interview with the Venice police chief on Thursday, he did tell us by phone he's committed to ensuring the safety of everyone that comes out to Wellfield Park. In Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Christopher, thank you. ABC 7 business commentator Richard Stern joins us now. And Richard, it was uh, just down arrows across the board today on Wall Street. Second straight day. Can you believe it? Yeah. Well, actually, the market's been up six out of eight, but two in a row on the downside. Two in a row on the downside. Any reason to panic? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I've found him two pretty darn good days. Down 38 yesterday, down 83 today. And why were they good? Well, guess what? Neither one up or down 100 points. That's a pleasant change. There you see the Dow down 83 points, one third of 1%, closing at 24,664.89. That on a volume of 947 million shares. The NASDAQ for the day down almost eight tenths of 1%. More than 57 points at 7,238.06. That on volume of 1,868,000,000 shares. And the S&P, yes indeed, down as well. The S&P down almost six-tenths of 1%, 15 and a half points at 2,693.13. Don't leave home without it. You've been hearing that for a long time from the people at American Express, and it looks like you're not leaving home without it. Shares of American Express jumped by more than 7% today after the company announced the second most profitable quarter in its history. And that's saying quite something since they've been in business since 1850. Consumer spending in the U.S. is up by 3%. Consumer spending all around the world up by 7%. You put that all together and people at American Express are very happy. That's the biggest gain they have seen in a long, long time. And Scott, you know, they're... The consumer is really what's driving this market higher when it goes higher. Right. So a lot of people are uh, not surprised to see American Express turn in a quarter like they just did. Okay. And then what about uh, Philip Morris? 
Philip Morris, well, I guess we all know what they make, yep. cigarettes, and guess what? Their sales continue to plummet Japan, which is a big market for them. Those sales are down, and speaking of down, 15.8% drop in Philip Morris in one day. That is a big drop. Significant, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Richard, thanks so much for the update. Appreciate it. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, the investigation continues into what happened to the engine on a Southwest flight that left one woman dead. And we'll get back to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. We'll have your first alert forecast and the chance for rain this weekend. Plus, how having a concussion can increase your risk of a rare condition. The ABC7 Stock Report is sponsored by Sunset Cadillac. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. Minnesota's only area rug superstore. Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru vehicles hold their value better than any other brand for 2018, according to ALG. And Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand for four years running. The Subaru Forester is an IIHS top safety pick for 12 years running. And right now, you can lease a new Subaru Forester for just $2.19 a month or get 0% financing with zero down. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. 20 years ago, the moviegoers of Sarasota looked up at the silver screen and wanted something more. And they got exactly what they wanted. 20 years of some of the best independent films from around the world. The most iconic Hollywood stars walking the red carpet. The most glamorous parties in Southwest Florida. 20 years building up to the most exciting announcement in, well, 20 years at the Sarasota Film Festival, April 13th to the 22nd. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to mesobook.com. When money's tight and emergencies arise, CashNetUSA.com is available 24-7 to deliver quick loans for approved customers when they need it the most. Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNetUSA. Serving part-time as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment to get an edge in the civilian world. Learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you at NationalGuard.com. The investigation into what happened to the left engine on a Southwest Flight 1380 is ongoing as investigators look for some of the engine's missing internal parts. And one Texas firefighter who helped try and save the woman that died recounts the harrowing incident. Omar Jimenez has the latest from Washington. I felt the calling to, to get up and do something, uh, stand up and act. Andrew Needham is a firefighter who was on Southwest Flight 1380 and helped pull one of his fellow passengers back inside the plane when their left engine broke midair, an object burst through a window and sucked Jennifer Reardon toward the hole where the window used to be. She later died. I feel for her family. I feel for her two kids, her husband, the community that she lived in. And as the healing process continues, so too does the investigation into what exactly happened. The National Transportation Safety Board says a preliminary look at the engine shows one of its 24 fan blades was missing, that there was evidence of metal fatigue where the blade attached to the engine hub and a separate fracture further down that same blade. It appears that the fatigue fracture 
was the initiating event, which later caused that, that secondary uh, failure. The Federal Aviation Administration says they will be issuing a directive that will include the specific engine model affected in this flight, requiring a, quote, ultrasonic inspection of fan blades when they reach a certain number of takeoffs and landings. Any blades that fail the inspection will have to be replaced. NTSB investigators are still tracking down evidence from the plane and will examine the engine and blade components at the materials lab in Washington, D.C. In Washington, I'm Omar Jimenez. Well, first, a southwest engine, now a Delta jet erupts, catches fire on the runway. More than 200 passengers were on board when one of the plane's engines malfunctioned. The Delta flight was headed for London. Passengers stayed on board as firefighters rushed to hose down the engine. Delta crews met the passengers at the gate with food and water, and fortunately, no one was hurt. More than 425 people have been evacuated from the Hawaiian island of Kauai since Monday. Heavy rain triggered massive flooding, caused landslides, knocked out power. Rescuers had to use helicopters, even jet skis, to get to stranded people, get them to safety. Hawaii's Red Cross has opened shelters for evacuees and for those who need food or water. The governor has issued an emergency proclamation now for Kauai. The chief of staff to the mayor says it's the worst natural disaster to occur on Kauai in 25 years. The National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch for all Hawaiian islands that's in effect through Friday afternoon as more rain is on the way. Horrible situation. I was just there last summer and uh, I can tell you parts of that island are really different looking from what I saw. Right, and more rain is on the way. The forecast is yeah. not, not as much as they've seen, obviously, but any yeah. uh, additional rain will cause some flooding problems. We're not looking at that kind of rainfall here over the weekend, but we do have increasing rain chances as a storm system develops. So tomorrow morning, a little bit of fog around should be okay. Good Friday, and then we'll see that rain chance increasing along with some cloudiness as a result of a storm system tracking along the southeast United States. Eventually, it will all clear out of here by Tuesday. So we have some changes, obviously, that are in the forecast for the weekend. Unfortunately, it happens over the weekend again. Saturday looks to be the best of the beach days. Now, we had an advisory yesterday. I want to clear, uh, clear things up for today. Uh, the atmosphere kind of moved around a little bit more. You noticed a little bit more breeze today, uh, and so not nearly as bad. Yesterday, I was at 105 today, uh, just a little bit below the, actually below the problem there as far as that goes at 51 at moderate. Range. I want to show you this photo real quick, too. This is an interesting photo that was sent in to our pics at mysuncoast.com. This is known as a sun dog, and typically you only see one. It's usually when the sun's in, uh, near the uh, horizon there on the sunrise or sunset, but this one was sent in by Dennis LaPlante. We appreciate that photo, Dennis. You can actually see the ring around it, too. That was associated with some cirrus clouds, ice crystals that have moved in uh, just around sunset last night. Now, Casey Key showing good beach weather today. It was beautiful yesterday and today. Uh, similar conditions expected tomorrow, but then the beach weather is going to deteriorate a little bit over the weekend. Uh, I think the best beach day will be on Saturday as opposed to Sunday. 86 right now in Jacksonville. It's 86 in Orlando. Inland areas getting a lot more heat today as a result of the lack of sea breeze. Uh, 87 in Lake Placid, Sebring at 85. Temperatures 10 degrees cooler in Inglewood as well as into uh, uh, Cortez now at 74 degrees. The Gulf water temperature is 76 with that wind developing out of the west and southwest, keeping things a little bit cooler right near the coast and the day planner. Looks to be pretty good tomorrow. We'll take you through time. Now 7 a.m., maybe a little fog around. That fog should not be a big factor. Uh, temperatures will be in the low 60s, uh, which is fairly typical. We'll warm up to uh, the low 70s to mid 70s. Should be a nice uh, morning. And then by the afternoon, uh, topping out right around 80 degrees with mostly sunny skies tomorrow. We do have a weak frontal boundary coming down. You can see that this is Friday morning, and that front is right there, and it's not much. It's not going to do a whole lot. As I mentioned, a little bit of fog around. Uh, tomorrow morning and then uh, some showers are possible working their way over but on Saturday you'll notice this is 4 p.m. this is the European forecast model there's still some uncertainty in this model as well as the GFS but we do expect to see a few showers around on Saturday and if we see anything at all they should not be all that intense it'll be some light rainfall uh, to moderate rain in the interior counties and here comes the storm system on Sunday this is noon and you can still see quite a bit of clouds around. That's why I mentioned the best beach day would probably be on Saturday as opposed to Sunday, but Saturday not all the best. But we'll see that rain chance increasing across our region on Sunday evening at 7 o'clock. And then here comes the front. Uh, this particular model doesn't do a whole lot with the front, so uh, there's still time to refine this, and I think the models are going to better handle on it as far as rain chances go. But those rain chances will stay elevated through Monday and Monday night and then subside on Tuesday. Well, our current conditions at the Sarasota Braden Airport, 78. It's sunny right now, and 
66 on the dew point. Winds are out of the west northwest at 10. As far as that wind forecast goes, it shouldn't be too bad for Mariners tomorrow. Or beachgoers alike, winds will be out of the north and northeast, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour. Not much of a wind, uh, but enough uh, to uh, cause uh, no concern, I think, for any kind of a major pollution problem. That northeast storm still winding down, rain mainly over the northeast and out west, more developing here. This is the storm system, which will bring us that uh, frontal system and rain. It's going to dive due southeast in time as that snow has moved out of the Midwest and Chicago. Here's the look at that big future cast. You can see heavy snow. They can see up to two feet of snow with this system over the uh, central Rockies, and then it's shifting off to the south and east and then eventually into our area on into the weekend, mainly on Sunday and Monday. Temperatures are moderating a bit over the Great Lakes. So some patchy fog tomorrow. Winds will be out of the north, northwest at 10 knots. Seas will be running two feet in a light chop. We're not looking at uh, too much of an advisory over the weekend, just to have to look out for those isolated storms as far as boaters are concerned. The winds will pick up a little bit uh, to 15 knots. Well, here's your forecast. Friday looking good. Saturday increasing cloud. We'll keep that 30% chance of rain on Saturday. Uh, those should be, if they, we see anything all, not too intense. Better chance for showers and storms comes Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night into Monday. Still a peak of sunshine now and again. Tapering off by Tuesday morning, that 30% chance is mainly for overnight Monday night and Tuesday morning. Then it looks good again. Temperatures do not drop all that much behind this front. Scott. Okay, Bob, thank you. Let's check first alert traffic. A crash on I-75 in the northbound lanes right near the University Parkway exit is causing some big backups this evening. You can see traffic all the way back or backed up all the way past the Bee Ridge Road exit. So slow going as you head north on the interstate tonight. In health news, nearly 40% of our veterans have suffered a concussion at some point in their lives. And as ABC's Janae Norman reports, that might increase their risk of a rare condition. New research done by the VA found that veterans with a prior concussion were 71% more likely than other veterans their age to develop Parkinson's disease. Even mild concussions were associated with increased risk of Parkinson's. Researchers think that this is explained by the release of a protein, alpha-synuclein, which accumulates in the brain cells of people with Parkinson's disease. They found that this protein is released by injured brain cells into the fluid surrounding the brain. The protein could then be taken up in abnormal amounts by other cells. Parkinson's is still a very rare disease, and it's certainly not the most common complication of concussion. But what can you do to decrease your risk? Make sure you and your loved ones wear a proper helmet during all high-risk sports activities. Buckle your seatbelt when driving. Elderly people at risk of falls should have mobility aids like a walker. And if you do have a concussion, follow the doctor's orders and rest, rest, rest. With this Medical Minute, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News. Marijuana is known to slow cognitive functions such as learning, memory, and attention span. But according to new research in young people, these effects may not persist for very long, even among frequent users. An analysis found that cognitive functioning between marijuana users and non-users was no longer noticeable after 72 hours. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warning salad lovers to stay away from all pre-chopped romaine lettuce. That's after an E. coli outbreak linked to chopped romaine has affected now at least 53 people in the last month. Illnesses were reported in 16 states, and while Florida is not one of them, the CDC says if you have store-bought chopped romaine at home, including salads and salad mixes, don't eat it, just throw it away. Symptoms of E. coli include severe stomach cramps, diarrhea, even vomiting, and in some cases it can be life-threatening. Coming up, thieves in Houston caught in the act again trying to steal ATMs from local courthouses. And a bear is caught on video romping through a woman's backyard. The story is when we come back. But you need an SUV. Why not have both? Levante, the Maserati of SUVs. Experience it today at Sunset Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah.
Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Police are investigating the fourth ATM heist in a month in the Houston area courthouses. All of the robberies caught on camera. It started back in March when suspects crashed into a Harris County courthouse and made off with an ATM. Then, April 15th, a truck was used to smash through the doors of a courthouse in Pasadena, Texas. Those suspects took off after an unsuccessful attempt to tow that ATM away. Days later, it happened again. This time, the suspects left when they realized the machine was empty. And then again today, yet another ATM was stolen from a courthouse in Harris County. Investigators now suspect these acts may be linked. A grandmother and her granddaughter have a close encounter with a bear in the backyard. The woman says she noticed her granddaughter staring at something behind them as they were playing outside the home in California. In the video, she can be heard screaming as she moves quickly to pick up the girl and take her inside. She says they had already uh, had a good amount of bear encounters this spring, with one digging through their trash just about two weeks ago. A new satellite is finally heading into orbit to look for other worlds. The Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS as it's called, launched yesterday from Cape Canaveral um, with the help of SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. TESS will scan about 85% of the sky over the next two years, but since it doesn't require any fuel to stay on course, the mission could go on for years to come. And still to come in your Suncoast News, a new approach to tackling the mosquito problem on parts of Longbow Key and how Lakewood Ranch High School students are planning to protest tomorrow in remembrance of the Columbine shooting victims. My name is Stefan Campagna, we're Ben Gates and Dramus, and here is your Law Tip of the Week. If you've been injured or arrested, I know this feels like the end of the road, but really it's the beginning of a long, potentially stressful process. So give us a call. Let us give you some peace of mind. Get the Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota for big savings on new Ram trucks during the Spring Sales Event. Shop the area's largest selection of new Ram trucks. Get the all-new redesigned 2018 Ram Quad Cab for as little as $23,999. Or save big and get up to $12,400 off a new Ram Bighorn Crew Cab. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota today. I can't believe they charged me this much. I don't know what I'm going to do. Ah. <sighs> Go to CashNet. USA.com now. If approved, you may get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. Thanks. Who are you? I'm CashNetUSA.com. Man. Apply now at CashNetUSA.com. 
Money's on the way with CashNet USA. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Every week on Animal Outtakes, it's a new animal adventure. When our feathered friends are in need of some help, there is a place that is strictly dedicated to birds. We are visiting the Seaside Seabird Sanctuary. And we're meeting this sleepy tiger. And Onyx deserves a rest. He's had a difficult past. Join us this week on ABC7. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining.